Welcome to week six maths for year four. This week we are going to be focusing on whole number. When we do whole number, you'll remember a few things that we've done throughout the year. So for some, this might be revision and it's a great way to really delve into these subjects. Remember when you watch this video to pause it whenever you need. You can pause then re-watch or you can keep going and then come back. Um, you'll have each lesson for the week and that's about it. So have fun. So lesson one Monday. We have a look. Our warm up is a little bit different this week. For warm up, I would like you to write facts you know about the number 30. You might create sums like 30 uh, divided by 1 is 30. Um, whatever it is, it can be as complex or as uh, extended as you'd like. But that's your warm up. So pause this video now. Once you're ready, you can go to the next slide um, and continue this video. OK, so let's get started. Our learning intention and what we are really focusing on for Monday's lesson. So I can read the place value and write numbers of up to five digits. When we say five digits, this is going into the ten thousands. I can order numbers in ascending and descending order. This is something that we've touched on this year and I've got a picture prompt here to help you remember ascending order being from smallest to largest, descending order from largest to the smallest amount. For today's lesson, I'd like you to please focus on this picture on the right it says, read and remember these place values. They will help you read larger numbers. So place, the place of the digit determines its value. When we see numbers, we have to remember that they actually represent, on these digits, represent an amount. They are not just there as something on a page. So when we see a three or any number in this right hand column here, we know that this is our ones. If we have an eight here, we would know it just represents an amount of eight. Here, the next column is the tens column. We're very familiar with this. Hundreds, then we go on to thousands, and sometimes people use a comma or a space to distinguish a number from hundreds to thousands. And then we have our 10,000s. I'd like you to click on this video here on the left because it's going to be a great mini lesson for you. If you can't click on it, the name of the video is down here. You can ask an adult to help you search for this on YouTube and have a go at listening and watching and maybe even playing along with the place value activity. Once you're ready, move on to the next slide. When we read numbers, we're going to look at the place values to really understand how we would say it. And when we can say it, we can write it. I've got an example here for you. It says read and write these numbers in words. We've only got the one because I think it's going to be pretty straightforward once you've read the, or watched the video. I'm going to just delete that circle because it looks funny. So it says 22,222. We know that it's 22,000 and not just 2,000 because there's a two in the 10,000s column. Two ten thousands would be 20,000. So 20,000 over here, we've got 2,220 and two. When we put it together, it reads like this. 20, oops, sorry guys. 22,200. Now we don't say 22, we need to use our and, and 22. Now, 
we're going to look at ascending and descending order. You've got the picture prompts here, so when you turn to the next page to do your own independent task, you can come back to this picture to help you with it. Ascending order. Here we have three numbers, so 98,238, 12,345, 37,239. We can have a look what determines the difference here is the 10,000 and 1,000 column. We want to see the smallest amount here. We know that it would be 12,345 because there's only one 10,000. So our first number would be 12,000 345, probably shouldn't use the, okay. Our next number would be, so it would be 37,000 because 98 is a higher amount, that would be more, if we had 37,000 chocolate M&Ms or 98,000 chocolate M&Ms, we would probably have less if we had 37,000. So 37,000 will be next. So 37,239. Then our third and highest amount is 98,200. And 38. There we go. So this is ascending order. We ascend up the stairs. Remember that example we had. Then we've got descending order. When we descend, we're going down. So we're starting from up top, our highest amount. So I've used the same numbers that I've used in the previous question as a strong example for you. So our highest amount here, we know, is 98,238. So that would be our first number. Now, if you would like, once you've completed these tasks, you might even put in six digit numbers and challenge yourself with the hundred thousands or even seven digit numbers and make it in the um, six digit number, sorry, would be the hundred thousand. Seven digits would be the millions, but that's up to you. So again, 98,238. Next would be 37,239. And lucky last, our smallest amount that we have here is 12,345. These numbers become really easy once you have a great understanding of place value, guys. When you have a great understanding of place value, you really understand what those numbers represent, the amounts, and which would be larger than the other. So pause this video and get ready to have a go. You might want to watch it again or turn to the next slide. Or go, Not really turn, it's not a book. Um, but you'll go to the next slide to practice independent tasks. So here we go. Now it's your turn to practice your independent work. You're going to be practicing the skill of writing your five digit numbers. Remember to do this, you'll have a great understanding of the ten thousands column, thousands column, as well as the hundreds, tens and units. Then you've got on the left, these three rows of questions, the stars, the balloons and the hearts. You'll be placing these numbers in ascending order. Remember when we ascend, we've got smallest to largest and that's in brackets there to help you. On the right hand column in the blue box, we've got descending order. 
Remember to watch my instructions again if you need help. Watch the YouTube video again if you need extra practice and have fun. Remember the next slide here is another practice go. For these ones, you might just put the numbers and order them from ascending to descending order. Okay, it's up to you. Or you can rewrite them, whatever makes it easier. And it could be in your doc, it could be on a piece of paper and then a picture into your doc, or you might just put your work on a piece of paper and submit it to your family for them to mark. Either way, have fun with Monday's maths and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye guys. Welcome to Tuesday Maths guys. Remember, this week is all about a whole number. You'll find tasks that you're quite familiar with. Remember, it's all about the building blocks. So in kindergarten, it would have started with units and then you move on to tens. And then with place value, as you get into the grades, it goes up to hundreds, then thousands. Now we're at ten thousands. Again, if you'd like to challenge yourself, you can change digits to have six digits and have a go at um, identifying and doing the place value questions on hundred thousands. You might even do seven digit numbers and create millions. It's up to you. Here for our warm up. I'd like you to write facts you know about the number 20. Can be anything. It could be that it's even. It could be that it is double, twen uh, double 10, sorry. Whatever you'd like. The just suggestions here was to create sums like plus, take away, times, and divide. But anything that relates to the number 20. You might even give yourself a timer challenge and put the timer on for two minutes and come up with whatever you can. Make it as fun and as exciting as possible. Enjoy, and I'll see you in the next slide. Okay, back to place value. Our learning intention for Tuesday. I can state the place value of numbers up to five digits. So this is really going on from yesterday's activity. It's really simple, guys. It's going to be a great activity as just a practice. It should not be too tricky, maybe the 10,000s, or sometimes knowing where you say and, and when there's a zero in the place. Sometimes that can be tricky, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be fantastic. Again, I'd like you to re-watch the place value mini lesson. Ask a family member to either help you find it on YouTube using that name down the bottom, or you can click on the link on the PDF. Either way, have fun, and I look forward to the next slide with you. Okay, so let's remember. We remember that the place value, uh, the place of a digit, sorry, determines its value. So where it's placed makes a big difference. Here on the left, if we see the number, it's 35,294. The four is in the ones, the nine is in the tens, two is in the hundreds, the five is in the thousands, and the three is in the ten of thousands. That is why Mrs. DeBay can actually read that number quite quickly. It's when you've got practice of those place values. In our number system, the value of each numeral depends on its place in the number. For example, here, in the, the four, in 4,236, is a greater value than the 4 in 3,242. Same number, it's still 4, but where it's placed in a, in a four-digit number gives it a greater value. So it's very important. Here is our picture again. So our 10,000s, 1,000s, 100s, 10s and 1s. Hopefully you'll get a great understanding of this. And um, let's move on to the next. Okay, so now it's practice time. For today's lesson, you are going to be looking at placing numbers in the right spot on a chart. 
Okay, so identifying the place value of that number. And then you're going to add, um, state the place value of these bold numbers. When it says bold, it just means the ones that are darker, guys. So let's look at question one. Write these numbers into the place value chart. I've done the first one for you, so 20,344. I can see by looking at this number chart that 2 in 20,344 is in the 10 thousands column. 0 is in the thousands column. You must make sure you put it into the right column. You don't just leave it. Otherwise, if you leave it blank, it will look like 2,344, but just placed wrong. So let's do 39,991. We know 3 is in the 10,000 value. 9 is in the thousands value. I might just use this. But it is also in the hundreds and the tens. And then we've got the ones. Okay. So I'm just sorry, guys, that three ended up being quite large. So I'll just fix that for me. Here we go. OK, so our next number. Oh, that's a big one. It is one less than 100,000. So it's 99,999, guys. So if we have a look here, there's a nine in the 10,000s column, a nine in the thousands column, a nine in hundreds column, nine in the tens column, and a nine in the ones column. There you go. So the nine in the thousands column is less than in value than the nine in the ten thousands column, just based on its place. Now let's look at twelve. The next. Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys, the last number. So 12,019. The reason why I say and 19 is because there is no value in the hundreds column. That means there is no hundreds, but there is a thousand and ten thousand. So it's sometimes people can get tricked with this number. So don't let zero confuse you. So we have one in the ten thousands, two in the thousands, nothing in the hundreds, one in the tens, and nine in the ones column. So there you go. Now we're going to look at stage, um, sorry, that should say state the place value. I don't know why it says stage. Ignore that. Okay. So state the place value of the bold number. So 19,208, 9 is in bold here. The 9 in this number has the value of a 1,000. Not 1,000, but just 1,000. If we look at the next question, I've done this on purpose. So 90,002. If we look here, the 9, we're still identifying 9. But it's not 9 as in 9 as an amount, but it's 90,000. When we look at that, we see that it's in the 10,000 place value. So we would write 10,000 because it's, that's its place. You might even write next to it in brackets, 90,000. It's up to you. So nine. There we go, 10,000. Then the nine in 21,009 has the place value of a one. So we'd say ones. And there we go. So now it's your turn, guys. Here, we'll click on the next page. Here is your independent practice. So you've got the chart up above. What you can do is either create your own on your doc by going to insert, insert table. You'll put a table with four, sorry, five columns and 
you might have two rows, one for the names of the place value and then one you will use for the numbers. Or you can write it on paper and draw a picture. It's up to you. But you're going to place these numbers on the place value chart. So here we go, these ones. And then on this side, what is the place value of the bold number? So you're going to state the place value of these numbers. So here in 39,893, oh my goodness, where is my mouse? Sorry guys, I'm using a mouse today and it's not really working with this. So I'll use the touchpad. So 39,893, you're just focusing on eight and stating its place value. Okay, you'll do those for the next question. So it's really straightforward today. I really just wanted to get to the point. No fluff. And again here, more independent practice. Simple, to the point. Great practice of place value. Should be very straightforward, guys. If you need any help, remember I'm on the Google Classroom and I'll be there to answer any questions. If not, have fun, enjoy maths, and I'll see you for tomorrow's lesson. Bye, guys. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday's lesson for maths. Again, remember that you can pause this video whenever you need. You can re-watch, you can pause and then keep going with the activity and whatever it is you need to make the task easier and more straightforward for you. Our warm up for today is writing the facts you know about the number 40. Again, could be any, anything to do with it. You might even state the place value. You might state the number before, the number after. You might state sums that add to 40, equal 40, whatever it is. Enjoy. So pause this video. Remember, you can do your warm up on paper and submit it into your doc. Or you can write it into your doc. Or you can just do it on um, a white, anything really, guys. Have fun with it and I'll see you at the next slide. Okay, ready for our learning intention. So year four. I can use expanded notation to partition numbers in standard and non-standard form. Now that has a lot of fancy schmancy words, but once you see it, you'll know exactly what I mean. When we partition numbers, we're breaking it into parts with the place value. So when we know our place values, that's why we did Monday and Tuesday's lessons, it's a build up. Once we understand that place value of every value and every number, you can pull it apart. It's like stretching it out. Like we stretch out our words when we're sounding them out. We stretch out our numbers. Say, for example, the number is 67,012. We stretch that out into parts. That word partition has parts. So say, for example, 67,012 in parts is 60,000 plus 7,000 plus 10 plus two, so there's no hundred there. And that's where we do our standard partitioning. We're just breaking it up into its place value parts. But instead of saying 10,000, 100,000, sorry, um, 10 units or ones, we're actually stating the amount or its value. But then when we do non-standard, this just means, hey, break it into parts, but it doesn't have to be the place value of each number. It could be 50 plus 17,012. We're still breaking up 67,012. It's the same value in the end. It adds up and it creates the same thing, but it's just a non-standard. It's not the, yep, this is the 10,000s, that's the thousands, that's the hundreds, that's the tens, and that's the units. So that's what we are focusing on today. Now let's go into our practice. I'd like you to watch these videos here. There are two videos for today. Remember to ask an adult to help you find the lesson on YouTube. So the first one is partition four digit numbers, place value, year four. And the third, uh, second video, sorry, is partition three digit numbers in different ways. So I want you to realize that we're still working on our five digit numbers 
because that is our syllabus outcome that we're looking at. But it's the same thing for four digit numbers, three digit numbers, even two digit numbers. So the concept is still the same. Enjoy these videos. Pause me while you watch them, obviously. Have fun. And I'll see you at the next, lesson, um, next slide. Okay, guys. So now it's practice with Mrs. Bay. I hope you enjoyed those place value videos. And I hope they made sense with expanding numbers in standard and non-standard partitioning. Here I've got some questions for you with the five digit numbers. They are the same for both, the same three numbers and one different example up here. So if we have a look at this example up the top, the number is 75,373. And it says equals, which means it's the same as. And it's the same as saying, so we're breaking it up, remember, into our place values. It's the same as saying 70,000 plus 5,000 because of our place value in this number plus 300 plus 70 plus 3. So here we've just stretched that number out. We've still got that same number, but all we've done is just broken it in, or even chopped it into parts, like oh, karate. Okay, so if we've got 38,699 and we stretch it out or chop it up like in karate, I think, never done karate before, so we would see that this is 30,000. So, whoa, okay. That was just horrible, guys. That's the, oh my gosh. I'm just going to rub that out and do that again. Okay. So 30,000. Writing on the computer touchpad is very tricky. So bear with me. 30,000. And very slow for some reason. Whoop. There it goes. Clicking somewhere else again. 30,000. Plus. Now we're going to the thousand column. So 8 is in the 1,000 column, so that means it's 8,000. Then we've got the 6 in the six in the 100 column, so it's 600. And then 9 in the tens column, so it would be 90. And then 9 in the 1's column, so we know it's 9. Here we go. So that's me stretching that number out, putting it into those parts. Then our next number, 47,018. Again, the 4 is in the 10,000's column, so we have 40,000. Then we have seven in the thousands column, so it's 7,000. See how we're relating it all back to that place value, guys? It's very important. Then we have nothing in the hundreds column. So I put zero. 10, or one, sorry, in the tens column, so it's not one. It's 10 because it's 110. Think of those MAB blocks. It's one of those longs. And then we have eight ones. So we would put eight. There we go. Our next number, 64,148. Six in the 10,000 column. So it's 60,000. Then we have four in the thousand column. So it's not 1,000, not 2,000, not 3,000, but 4,000. Then we have one in the one in the hundreds column. So it's 100 or one of those flat MAB blocks. We have four tens or four of those long. So it would be 40 in total. And then we have eight ones. And there you go, guys. 
Now we are going to look at the non-standard partitioning. And basically, all you are doing, so it can be a bit tricky sometimes. This one, take your time with. You might also want to use a calculator to double check your work. But you're basically breaking the number into parts, but they're not broken into their place value values. You can break it down into something like, here we have 38,699. Instead of doing 30,000, 800 plus 800 plus 6, sorry, 8,000 plus 600 plus 90 plus 9, I might do something like 38,000, so joining the hundreds, uh, 10,000 and the thousand, so 38,000 plus 600 plus 99. So that's one option. Then when we've got 47,018, I might do 30,000. So it's not even using the 40,000, guys. And you'll see what I'm doing in a second. So 30,000 plus... Now... I have one uh, one value missing, so it needs to be another 10,000, but I'm going to join it with the 7,000 and make it plus 17,000. So still using that 10 value, 10,000 value, sorry. So plus 17,000 plus 18. So there you go, non-standard partitioning. See what I mean by it can be a bit tricky and a bit different? But if I put that back together, I know that 30,000 plus 17,000 would be 47,000 plus 18 would equal 47,018 in total. That's what I meant by getting a calculator. You want to check that you've placed it and stretched it out in a way that when it's put back together again, it makes that same amount. If it, pardon me, if it doesn't, then you will need to just double check your work. There's no harm in making a mistake, guys. You see Mrs. Debay making mistakes all the time. I even made one before with that spelling error. Okay, so it's okay. Non-standard partitioning can be a bit tricky sometimes. So be patient and be kind to yourselves. So the next one. So we have 64,148. If we have a look, again, I'm going to do 50,000 oh my beautiful handwriting so 50,000 plus I'm going to put 14,000 and this time I'm going to do plus 148 Well, I could even do 50,000 plus 14,000 and 148. Same kind of thing. Okay, see the difference with the partitioning. So there's my examples and my beautiful speaking and explaining. And we'll go to the next slide. So here you're going to do your own practice. So the questions on the left, so the first one, 20,000 plus 1,000, plus 500, plus 40, plus 5, put it together this time. So it would equal 21,542, right? And then on this side, you're going to do the non-standard partitioning in the orange box. So I've done the first one for you as an example. Some of them here, they've got the number this time and you're breaking it and stretching it into the parts. So they've got the opposite ends. So where they've stretched it, tell me the number. Or here's the number, guys. Stretch it out and partition it. We call this... Now, I totally forgot to mention this before in the other slide. See? Teachers make mistakes too. So expanded notation. This is all 
expanded notation. That's the fancy schmancy word. When we expand, we're stretching, same meaning. It's a sim um, synonym, guys. So it's the same thing, expanded notation. I want you to remember that word because you'll be using it in year five and year six. So this partitioning, non-standard partitioning is all expanded notation. So here, practice this activity. Remember, you can do it in your doc. You can do it on paper. Paper might be easier for this one, but if you type it up, I know you've got some excellent skills. You're way better than I am on this. It's amazing. But whatever it is that helps you answer these questions, do it. Um, and then we've got the next page here, guys. So on this page, you can complete the questions. So the standard um, here, it says the first one's done for you. They've got the number, you're expanding or doing expanded notation and then doing the non-standard partitioning. And then down here, write the standard form. So they've stretched it out already. You're putting the number back together again. It's like an elastic band. They've stretched the elastic band and then they're snapping it back. And then you're snapping the number back together. Have fun. Enjoy expanded notation. Ex enjoy partitioning with non-standard and standard partitioning. Remember, I'm on the Google Classroom. If you need any help, submit your work into your doc via either typing or pictures, or you might just do it on paper and then give it to an adult to mark. Either way, have fun, and I look forward to seeing your work, and I will see you in tomorrow's lesson. Bye, guys. Hi, guys. Welcome to the last lesson for the week. It's our last lesson because tomorrow you'll have Science Week uh, activities with Mr. Quatch, and I can't wait to see those. Today, our lesson will be another part of whole number, and it's going to be on rounding numbers. And it's something that you should be familiar with. Here, let's start our warm up. So, with our warm up, guys, you're going to write facts you know about the number 100. Remember, you could do before, after facts, you could do number um, 10 numbers under, 10 numbers above. Whatever it is, you can do plus, takeaway, times, divide, even, odd, anything. Anything you can come up with with the number 100. Remember, you can pause this video, complete it now. It could be in your doc, on a piece of paper, whatever it is. Have fun, and I'll see you in the next slide. Okay, now let's look at our learning intention. So year four. I can round numbers to the nearest 10, 100, 1000 or 10,000. And I can hear some of you going, oh yeah, I remember this. I can just imagine you saying that. So enjoy these two videos as a recap. Remember, if you need to, you can ask an adult to help you search them on YouTube or you can click on the link, whichever way helps. Watch both, please, because one is on 10 and rounding to 10 and rounding to the nearest 100. And the second video is on rounding to the nearest 1000 and 10,000. Have fun. Pause the video now and I'll see you in the next slide. OK, so let's begin. Now, here is a little fact sheet. If for some reason your video stops working, you can have this as um, a little bit of a reminder. So when we round up or round down, we underline the place value you are rounding from. Say if we're looking at the nearest 10, we would look at we would underline the tens column number and then we look to the right. The number on the right is very important. If that number is 0, 1, 2, or 3, or 4, we round down. If it is 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, we round up to the next 10. Okay, it will make more sense when I, once I demonstrate, but this is very important, guys. You're going to, I'll remind you again. So say, for example, our number is 234. If we're rounding to the nearest 100, we would underline the 2 because it's in the 100 column. And then we would look at the next number. We would look at the three in the tens column 
because if that number is less than 4 or 4, we're rounding down to the next 10. If it's more than 4, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we're rounding up, okay? And then that 100 will either be 200 or 300. So that's all me speaking. So let's move to the next slide so I can demonstrate. Okay, guys, now let's practice some more. So when we have our five-digit numbers, I want you to really focus on just the place value we're going to be rounding. So I'll put in 17,345 here. So there it is. Now, when we look at the question, it says rounds to the nearest 10. So we are going to underline the 10 and then look at the number on the right. The number on the right, here I'll put up here, so one, two, three, four, we round down, five, six, seven, ugh, what was that? Sorry guys, let me just get that. Seven, whoop, it's doing that thing with the mouse again. Eight and nine, we round up. Okay, so you might need to go back to the other page to remember that as well and see that chart or go back to the videos, it's up to you. So when we round to the nearest 10, five is determining that we're going to round up to the next 10. So the number becomes 17,350 because 45 rounds to the nearest 10 and becomes 50. But then if we look at the next question, it says rounds to the nearest 100. So we have 17,000. 345 and when we're rounding we're trying to make it an easy number like a, a 10 a hundred a thousand where there's zeros are there it becomes an easy number it's round like a round remember circles zeros are round I guess that could help now the hundred column is what we are underlining and then we're looking at the number on the right so here, 17,345. The four is one of our rounding down numbers. Because it's a rounding down number, it doesn't go up to the next hundred. It doesn't become 17,400. It stays down as 17,300. So that hundreds column, the value stays the same, but it becomes one of those rounded numbers. That's what I mean by like, just remember rounding, round numbers, zeros, that might help you and jog your memory. So then we look at the thousands column. Again, same number. So 17,345. So sometimes rounding can be a bit confusing because you sit there and think, but why? So don't try and like try and really just see that it's basically making it an easier number by either going up or rounding down. In real life, guys, you'll notice we do this with um, our groceries. If you go to the shops and you see the little tag might say um, $16.33 or whatever, but then we round it up. Um, sometimes it's 57 cents and they might round it up to um, 60 cents. Something like, um, like 9 cents rounds up to 10 cents, 4 cents. It's a bit tricky because it becomes 5, but that's different. Rounding to 5 is a different question. But so these things are all around us and that is why we're doing it. Now we're going to our rounding to our nearest thousand. Sometimes it can be a bit confusing, but I think we'll get there. 
All right, so 17,345, we're rounding to the nearest thousand. So again, underline the thousand to the arrow if you'd like. It helps to remember to look at the number on the right. So when we look at the number on the right, it is a three. It's a round down number. So 17,000, now go back to that thousand column. That thousand column is going to stay the same. But then the numbers on the right, will become round and turn into zeros. Then it becomes an easy rounded number. So 17,000. There we go. If that was an eight, if it was 17,845, the answer would change to 18,000. It would be the next thousand up. And it would still be a rounded number because it's an easy number with those round zeros at the end. Okay, then we've got 10,000. So this means we're looking at the 10,000 column, then the thousands column is determining what we're doing. So let's write our number. 17,345. So when we look here, we can see that we're going to go to the 10,000 column. Okay, then the number that tells us what we're doing is on the right. Seven is a rounding up number. So our 10,000 is going up to the next 10,000. It's going to become 20,000. But when it becomes 20,000, it can't be 20,735 because that's not a rounded number. It's not the next 10,000. The next 10,000, the closest 10,000, is just 20,000. There you go. So I hope that makes sense, guys. Watch this video and demonstration again and again if you need to. Remember, the more you watch, the better you understand, the better you'll have a chance at remembering it next year and the year after that when you need to use these in other questions. You'll use them in year five and six, also in high school, but then in real life as well. Okay, so say for example, if you're selling your car, you might put in that um, you're selling it for $19,999. You will know the person will probably round it up to $20,000. Or if you want, it, want to sell something for $15,000 and you want to put it up as $15,300, dollars to see your chances it's most likely you're going to round it down when you really sell so it comes up in real life um, not as obvious but have fun with it we'll look at the next questions so here your independent practice you've got four numbers here and then each number you're going to round to the nearest ten hundred thousand and ten thousand just like I did the next page is also the same, guys. It's the same thing, just four different numbers. If you need help, I'm on the dock. So I'll just show you. There it is. But again, remember, guys, that you're looking at, say, if it's the ten um, nearest 10, look, underline that 10 column, draw the arrow to the next um, number on the right, and then you can start rounding. Think 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 goes down, five, six, seven, eight, nine goes up. Enjoy, have fun, uh, put your work into the doc via either you're typing it up, you're going to either put it on a paper and then submit it into the doc, or if you can't do that, post, um, put it on your piece of paper, do your working out, and then show an adult and ask them to mark it for you. Either way, have fun with the maths for the week. It's our last lesson. I look forward to seeing your work. And if you need anything, I'm here for you. Other than that, have a great day, guys. Bye.